They kill them brutally, brothers and sisters. And hang that dead meat up there for a couple of hours, get it on a cold truck, and try to get it back to the processing plant. Is that right? That's not good for you and I, health. The blood has to leave the animal. How many of us know that the Holy Quran say it's forbidden for us to eat blood? That's right. Forbidden. You think them dollar hoogies don't got no blood in it? You think them cheese sticks and McDonald's burgers you got don't got no blood in it? You, you know it got blood in it because if you ask to get it rare done, you'll see the blood in it. That ain't oil. Is that right? That ain't grease. That's blood. And you eat in this blood. And you are becoming other than yourself. The English Sea Lesson Our Brothers and Sisters beautifully read last night. It says, uh, 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 why does the devil, uh, 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 why does he feel the devil now that he's a big man? He feels the devil now because, uh, uh, he feels the devil now because he taught him to eat the wrong foods. Does that have anything to do with the above question number 10? Yes, sir. That made him other than his own self. How did eating the wrong foods make him become other than himself? Because when you eat totally different from the natural way that you eat, it'll put you on a different course. <laughs> Praise be to Allah in this message. Can we prove it? Yes. How many of us ever had a garden? Maybe had some uh, herb trees, grew some broccoli or something. You put the wrong fertilizer down there, or too much or too little water, it'll produce something different. Is that right? Tell them, Sister Captain. If you <laughs> see the gardener over there, you got an orange tree, and you give it the wrong fertilizer. The oranges will come out wrong. Some of them will be too big, some of them might be too small. Some of them may be ripe, but don't have no seeds. Some of them may look good, but don't have no flavor in it. When you offset the fuel for that organism, it sets up a lifestyle of deviation. This is why white folks made us eat the hog. How many of us know how black folks began to eat the hog? It was on a slave ship. When you understand how we, how hog was offered to us, you, it's no way you would want to eat it. It's no way you would tolerate your children eating it. It's no way you would tolerate your friends eating it. I remember a brother Muslim was telling me he was seeing his sister and they was going out on their first date. He told the sister before they even went out, listen, I'm going to pick you up at six. Be ready. But no, I'm not buying you no hog. I don't care if you buy it yourself. If we sit down and eat, don't eat none of it. And this is how we got to be. And why? Why Why be so strict like that? When you understand how white folks got us on that thing. When we was on that slave ship, brothers and sisters, they, we wasn't eating pig meat in Africa. Y'all know that, right? We didn't eat the hog. But when we got the hog, white folks offered to us and the slaves would not eat it on a slave boat. But they had a stockpile of it. And it takes six months for Africa to, uh, to get to America. Ain't no refrigerators on there. That not only was the meat stinking originally, but it stunk because they was poorly maintaining it or keeping it fresh. Is that right? So when they gave it to us, we naturally didn't want it. So how did they force us to do it? They knocked out our teeth. And when they knocked out the teeth of the slave, first they bounded your hands. They bounded your hands because they knew you were strong and they knew you knew how to fight. They knew you knew how to build. That's why they came and got us. So they chained our hands up because we wouldn't build, but also so we wouldn't fight. They chained our feet up so we wouldn't run. So when we was bound and tied up, they knocked out our teeth, put a funnel down your mouth. The same type of funnel you pour transmissional oil in your car. Is that right? Something, a, 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 a car does not digest, excuse me, it doesn't digest oil. Is that right? You just pour it in. That's what the slave master was hoping from you. You wasn't digesting it, so he put it in a funnel and force feed it down inside of you. But this hog being strange to the black man, the first time the black man has ever ate hog in trillions a year, diarrhea set in. Is that right? Diarrhea set in. Can we prove it? It's illegal to serve pork in prisons. How many of us know that? You can't serve hog in prison. But when these hog eating Christians get out of jail and they reintroduce that swine to their system again, they smell like hell. They got diarrhea. They got the bubble guts. It shows in your face. Is that right? So when a slave was bitch being introduced to this fault, this hog meat for the first time, it caused diarrhea. And when this diarrhea set in, it caused problems on them both. They can't bring everything.
every slave up, every time he defecates on himself. So they had to come up with a plan. So in this plan that diarrhea had caused on a slave ship, what did they begin to do? They took a cork. How many of us ever drunk wine before? Or seen people drink wine? When they popped that cork. This white man took a cork, wrapped tape around the cork, the cork stuffed it in a black man's anus. Then after he stuffed it in a black man's anus, he put a piece of string, rope, rope string. They put a piece of rope string at the bottom of the uh, cork. Then he set the cork on fire to seal the anus shut of the slaves. So that this pig meat can marinate and firmament in the digestive tract of the slave. Is that right? Read this in a slave narrative. This is not coming from the Islamic history to defame Christians. This is Christians writing this about black folks trying to become Christians. They made it this way on a slave ship. So if you knew it took you this much hell to eat that divinely forbidden flesh, why would you willingly do it today? They put the cork in the anus of the slave so that he wouldn't dehydrate from the diarrhea. Diarrhea, if you know, takes the water from your body. And because the slaves had no water naturally in the body, they were non-productive when it came to the shores of North America. So they had to come up with a solution. And that solution was to cork up the anus of the slave, seal it up, let this hog meat materialize and firm it into the slave. This had a two-pronged effect. We the strongest people on the planet Earth, brothers and sisters. And what do not kill us or make us stronger? They had it in the minds of your babies. This may hurt you. You, your anus is uh, for us glued shut. It'll hurt you. But what we are expecting is for your children to become tolerant to this forceful pig meat. They wanted our children to be tolerable to this. Why? What's so different between pig meat and regular beef? The difference is, brothers and sisters, the hog will destroy your mental ability. And when your mental ability is destroyed, you're easily manipulated and easily be controlled. What perfect diet would you give a slave than a trachina pork filled worm? Is that right? So, as a rule, brothers and sisters, do not eat that hog. Do not allow your children to eat that hog. Teach your family members not to eat that hog because it's destroying our mental ability. Not only does it destroy your mental ability when Allah is on the scene today, because He is, that pork on your breath and coming out of your skin, brothers and sisters, will make you unfit for Allah. This ain't new. We got to talk about it. We got babies in here, right? This pork is not new. Scientists and medical assertions, they tell you to leave that hog alone. But when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad tell you to leave that hog alone, we don't want to ignore it. When that doctor say you're suffering from diabetes, when that doctor say you're suffering from high blood pressure, that's when we want to get rid of it. But we met Allah in person, our master for our Muhammad, is that right? And he gave us the cure to all of our ills. And that it is written right here in this book. If you get how to eat to live, it will give you the fright foods that will give you mental power. That's what we lack. We don't got no strength because we ain't eating nothing that's giving us life. In order for you to resist this evil, uh, uh, temptuous world, you got to have life in your body. Is that right? How many of us eat life? You got to eat life. It's a problem when you substitute... And the older brothers and sisters can bear witness to this. We substitute our refrigerator for our cupboards. Mm, yes, sir. You understand what that means? Mm. That means we store our food on the shelf, mm. not in the refrigerator. Why? What's the difference? When you're using your refrigerator to store foods, you got live foods. You got to keep it cold because it'll go bad. But when you're using your cupboard as a store, that nah, ain't going bad. Ain't no life in that. They ain't going to die because they ain't never living. It's freeze-dried. It's noodles. It's hydrogenized plastic that all you got to do is add water to. Is that right? And we, we wonder why we can't produce nothing. We got to understand what is it going to take for us to have the ability to produce. You got to change your diet. How many of us eat fruit on a daily basis? How many of us know why fruit is the, one of the best things to eat? Our bodies, brothers and sisters, is a recycling plant. Our bodies is a recycling plant. 
And in that recycling plant, that which you that which you burn off leaves a residue. Fruit is one of the only vegetables or only fruits, foods that we eat after digestive. It doesn't leave any residue that gets the body sick that will cause poisons and decay. Right. So, brothers and sisters, I hope that you get you gain something from what was given and spoken. Our hardworking brother minister is here, and he would like to bring us further into what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches. <laughs> and again, a hard round of applause goes to our youth who gave us a spectacular show last night. And because of the temple, they had the ability to give us a show. And if we would yield to popular demand and never have temples and just have Islam off the cuff, or while we're drinking coffee at Starbucks and Starbucks and, Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts, we would not have the ability... See, I don't even know how to pronounce it because we don't go there. Is that right? The brothers and sisters congregate amongst ourselves. So, we have to have temples because if we don't, we won't have the heaven that we had last night. So without further ado, our hard-working brother minister, our resident brother minister, Al Mutaquan Ali, our hard-working resident brother minister, and I leave his agreement in the nation's greatest of peace and of paradise. Assalamu alaikum.